Hey guys, today we're going to do a value study. This is a continuation of a project I had drawn before in the How to Draw a One Point Perspective Bedroom. Um, this is what the composition will look like at the end. So to start, I use the Prismacolor Grayscale markers. These are cool gray markers that I'm using. And the first marker I'm going to be using is a 10% cool gray. Um, I use that because um, it's scary to go dark all of a sudden. So I use my 10% in areas where I think light will be coming in and having some kind of value scale. Um, I mean, obviously you saw from the uh, end result that I definitely go darker than this. But in the beginning, I just used the 10% to, to give me a boost of confidence. Now I'm working with a 20%. So normally what I do is I do 10%, then 20, then 30, then 40, and then after that I kind of go back and forth. Um, but it is always good to, to kind of start light and then progressively get darker so that you at least know where your shadows will be, and then you can always emphasize the shadows at a later time. Now this is a room that isn't built, so I'm not using a reference image, so I don't know for sure exactly where the light will be and the shadow will be. I am just thinking that, hey, there's a big window to the right, so there's going to be light coming in from that side. So I'm going to put shadows under things and then to the left of things since my window is on the right side. And then I've got some lamps every once in a while, so I'm doing a little bit of a glow around it, and I will do a little bit of light um, that is kind of revealed uh, so I just don't render some of these areas so that way it looks like a glow of light that's pulling down um, underneath the lamp. Now I'm getting a little bit darker in areas so this is probably a 40% right now and I'm emphasizing my shadows a little bit more. Now you can always do the straight edge when you're doing marker work just to help you clean things up a little bit. I have this triangle that I use and I have hot glue gun um, some pennies to the underneath just so that the uh, marker doesn't bleed underneath the straight edge. So I have a dedicated marker um, triangle and straight edge. All right, so now I'm getting a little bit darker and I'm thinking there's some shadows in the bookcases. So I'm doing some kind of detail there, but I'm not gonna emphasize it because the foreground is where I want to draw your attention to. So I will take more time in the foreground. Um, the background, I don't want it to be completely blank. So I do something to it, but I don't wanna bring the emphasis to that area. Now. For my shadows here, for the chairs, I'm going to get darker, but I just start off really light in the beginning because it is scary to go dark all of a sudden, especially with markers because there's no undo button. Not like that Procreate app I like to use. Um, so now, if you ever get your markers dirty, you just you know roll it out on a scrap piece of paper. I have to do it quite often. Um, just to keep my work clean. And sometimes I do oopsie doopsies and I've been doing it for a while and some, you just have to get over it because there is no undo button. You just do the best you can to keep it as clean as possible. Um, so every once in a while I do try to remember to wipe off the edge of my straight edge or my triangles with some rubbing alcohol to just keep the uh, edges clean. So that when I'm working with dark markers and it gets on the edge and then I go back to a light color marker, it doesn't mess up my light color marker. Here's where I'm showing you how to do the um, pool of light where I'm doing like a cone of light and sh I do a shadow around that. Um, so basically you always want to start light and then you get darker and then I will be working on the textures and I'll be thinking about light and shadows just so I can find some edges that have like high contrast so it brings your eye to it and then I'll have some soft areas 
where there aren't as much contrasting um, values. So I hope this helps you. Um, and you can see like towards the end of the video, that's where I kind of take a moment to step back and, and look at it again and see, hey, where should it be lighter? Where should it go darker? And then I, I put my, emphasize my shadows there. And then I'm also using Jelly Roll later on. You'll see the, for like the last thing I do um, to kind of clean up some edges if I need to. But I definitely recommend using a straight edge for marker work even though like when I do my freehand sketching I don't like to use a straight edge but for marker work I like to use the straight edge because I think it just looks more clean All right, so this is the part where I actually finally go darker. This is probably um, a 60% um, that I'm using, and this is the darkest that, that I've gone so far. But this particular chair is a dark navy velvet you know, upholstered chair. So I have to make it darker than the other elements. Uh, like the bedding is going to be light. The pillows will be light. But this chair is darker, so I need to make make myself go darker. Even though it's scary and there's no undo button, this is where I pull out my 60, my 70, my 80, my 90. Um, it, and it will be in stages, but when you start to go darker in areas that should be dark, you will start to see a, a bit of contrast and things will look more three-dimensional. So yes, it is scary. There's no doubt about that. But um, in the end, it'll look better. So that's why you definitely want to, you know, build it, you know, with 40, then 50, then 60. You know, if you're really bold and confident with your strokes, go ahead and go to 90. Because in the end, I do go to 90%. And then I kind of blend into the 40%. But in the beginning, you know, it, it is scary to go dark. So that's why I build. I'm all about building values with marker work. So I'll see you back in a few minutes towards the end.
Now you can see that I've gone darker in some areas. The shadows are more defined, they're darker, um, but it helps pull your eye to those areas because it's not all the same value. Um, you want to make sure that you're using more than your 10, 20, 30, 40 percent. You know, a lot of times people are just scared to go 40 percent, but you really have to take a look at the items that you're rendering. You know, if it's a dark wood, you're going to go darker. Um, if it's a light item, then maybe stick to 10, 20, 30 percent um, in some areas, 40 percent. But if you you have to look at all your, your your items that you've selected and kind of sometimes it's helpful to go ahead and take your mood board and convert it to black and white so you can see the range of grays that you'll have to deal with. You know that way you'll know like hey I need to go to all the way to 90 percent in some areas because that's where things will start to look more sharp and things will pop uh, by going a little bit darker in some areas because you need that sense of contrast. All right, so now that I've defined that rug a little bit more, now I need to bite the bullet and make this chair dark. So this is where I'm using um, like a 70 or no, actually 90%. This is 90% some areas. Combination of 90, 70, 80. And then here I've left a little bit of light at the top because there's a window and I'm thinking lights coming in through that window. Um, so I'm blending in my uh, rounded arms so it looks like it's, there's channels in the, in the, for the fabric so it gathers there so it's a little bit darker. So here in the background I'm also making like underneath the cushion a little bit darker, underneath the chair a little bit darker. 
So now when you look at it, you can see that that chair is darker in value than, let's say, the bedding, the pillows, and the coverlet. But the bed hangings are like a medium color. So anyway, that's how I approach things. I try to make things have a range so that it uh, helps you have interest to your composition, that it's not all dark, but it's not all light either. And then the last thing I do before I finish, I, you know, step away from it and then I look at it and see, hey, what, what can I do to make this better? And sometimes like this gel pen here, if you've done a, like an oopsie doopsie somewhere, that gel pen helps hide it. Or if you want to make your edges a little bit clean, like I maybe went a little bit crazy in my channel tufting, so I clean up those edges. Um, here underneath this shadow, I mean the bed hanging there, I want it to be a little bit brighter in contrast. Now you don't have to use it. I try to be very um, careful about where I want my whites to be, but you know, if you have oopsie doopsies, you go ahead and use that white gel pen that'll help you out. And then you can smudge it if it's too sharp of a contrast. But that's about the last thing I do is I just kind of look for areas to 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 make it better. Well, I hope that helps you and I'll see you next time.